I want to be president for all Americans. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? We stand together for liberty. To build a future that works for all of us. Sadly, the American dream is dead. Hey, and Zedemy here. Today, we're starting a new project. And that project is Democracy 3 within Zedemy. Today's video is going to be a brief overview of what the game is and what our project is going to be for the next several months. Now, I am still going to be doing Heroes of the Storm content, so uh, don't worry, that's not going to go away. But in addition to that, I will be doing Democracy 3 videos, uh, hopefully about once a week. Now, let's talk a little bit about what this game is, what the project is going to be, and what our role is going to be in it. So, as I start playing, I'll start explaining. And I think that'll be the most, uh, that'll be the easiest way for us to move forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the game, and I'm going to choose a country. Now, for this project, we're primarily going to stick with the United States. So I'm going to choose the United States, and uh, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of information here. Uh, the idea of Democracy 3 is that it is a governing sim. Uh, before you fall over dead of boredom, let me explain. The idea is that it places you as the president of whatever country you choose, or the leader of the country that you choose. And you get to choose what policies will be enacted by your country. Now the goal of this game is to one, be reelected, two, leave your country in a better place than what it was, and three, not get killed by people who dislike you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start playing. Now, with this game, I can choose what my party is, and I can rename it. I'm just going to pick something random for today. And then I can set my term length, my term limits, and any natural disasters or compulsory voting or monarchy uh, that fits with my nation. I can also set the difficulty levels and so on. Now, I'm going to leave these all pretty much static, just because uh, I think it's uh, better that way, and we'll throughout the project you'll you'll kind of see why so i'm going to go ahead and click on play now when i say click return to government uh it tells me that i have just been elected as president and the lives of all 613 million citizens are now in my hands now as you will imagine there are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Plus, do not forget that you face re-election in four years, so you'll need to monitor the opinion polls and our party membership. Good luck. So as you can see here, we have some uh, indicators that probably need some help. Our unemployment is high, our crime is a bit high, our poverty is getting a little bit bad, but our education is good, so that's great. Our health is bad and our GDP is bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin my term of office. Now, as I said, this looks a bit complicated here. Uh, don't worry, I'll break it down. Uh, as I said, this is a government sim. So the idea is that you are the president and you get to decide how to run the country. Now, this is a little bit different than real life, because in real life, as president, you do not have the final say in what gets passed and what changes in the country. We have a Congress, and um, well, that is the House of Representatives and the Senate, who also decide. So, in this game, we do have to suspend belief just a little bit, and just believe that everything that I do will be changed in the game. Now let's take a look at what this game is doing because there's a lot going on. Uh, on the top there is a bar and this bar is a lot of information. So in the upper left hand corner um, the game is broken down to turns and there are four turns per year so it's basically every three months equals a turn. Now what you decide or what you can do in a turn is determined by your political capital which is represented by the number in the upper left hand corner. Now, your political capital uh, is generated by the loyal members of your cabinet. Now, we'll get into that in a little bit. But the idea is, as long as your cabinet 
uh, your cabinet is happy, you will have a lot of political capital to make changes and so on. Now, what keeps your, your cabinet happy? Well, the people do. So we'll get into that. Next, we have our income and expenditures. So right now, as you can see, we are in a deficit. And yes, these are a little bit unrealistic numbers because we deal with trillions now instead of billions. But for the sake of the game, we're going to be dealing with this. So each quarter, I get $833 billion. And my expenditures is about $1.3 trillion. So uh, I have to keep that in mind. Notice that my deficit is at $482 billion per turn and my debt is $3.5 trillion, so I'm in a bit of a hole. Uh, the first thing I'll probably need to do is try to cut that deficit down, uh, so keep that in mind. Then I have a clock that tells me how long my term is running, so we are at the very beginning. And then as we move over, we have uh, a number of symbols, and these symbols represent uh, different things. So I'll click on the gun, and this is my intelligence briefing. Now, throughout the game, when I make changes, it's going to make people upset. So as it, I make people upset, this will be the threat assessment of those people. So as you can see, there are uh, different uh, groups, and as I do things, they'll get more or less angry. So right now, everyone's kind of fine with me. Uh, I don't have to worry too much. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, next, I have a series of graphs. Now, as uh, president, I need to know where everyone is uh, in terms of their support for me and my party. So in this second uh, tab, or the second area, is my polling. So I can look at voter types. So these are a number of different uh, kind of focus groups that are constituencies that make up my electorate and I can go and see how they've gone up or down as I change policies and enact things. Uh, we have focus groups, so I can look at individual people and I can get a feel for what the average person thinks of what I'm doing. I have my policies and where they sit um, in the public eye, so prisons are very popular, whereas the alcohol law, uh, if enacted, uh, would be rather unpopular. The changes will tell me what changes I have made throughout my uh, tenure as president and my political compass. So this is this is what will tell me if I'm conservative, conservative capitalist, conservative socialist, and so on. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a lot of information here. Uh, the dollar sign will tell me where all my expenditures are coming from and where my income is also coming from. So I can take a look at this and decide, okay, maybe I need to raise taxes or lower taxes or I need to cut rail subsidies, things like that. Uh, and then we have charts that will tell me uh, what the interest rate is or how the global economy is going or as you can see, my debt is steadily rising. So that's probably something I need to be concerned about. Uh, next, you'll see a light bulb. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, this is where my achievements are, so as I play, I can unlock achievements. And next is my cabinet. Now, this is my cabinet. Now, they are called ministers. I wish it wasn't called ministers. I wish they were just called um, cabinet members, but it's an international game, so that's how it goes. Uh, and I do have a foreign like a foreign affairs minister, and his loyalty is pretty high, his experience is pretty low, and his effectiveness is kind of in the middle. So political capital measures the amount of power you have within government. You need political capital to implement or change some policies, depending on how controversial that policy is to the electorate. Political capital is calculated each turn and is generated by your ministers. The more loyal a minister is, the more supportive they will be and the more political capital they generate each turn. To a limited extent, unused political capital can be carried over to the next turn. So keep that in mind. So right now, my current political capital sits at around 24. So that's good. Now I do have a number of different, uh, different ministers industry we have a chancellor which is tax uh, public servant law and order and transport which is uh, one from a mod that i have recently uh, added 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. Now I can reshuffle my cabinet. As you know, cabinet members can come and go. And um, what I can do is I can keep an eye on them and I can decide, well, what I want to do with it. Okay. Uh, then we have some nuts and bolts. Uh, so that's just my options and my political party. So the blue ribbon or what looks like a blue ribbon will tell me how many members are in my party, how many activists, uh, and how those activists can boost voter turnout. Now, as you know, voter turnout is a huge thing in the American election system, mostly because we do not have compulsory voting. Now, places like Australia, they have compulsory voting, but America doesn't. So my goal is to make sure I can get as many of my people to the polls as possible. Now, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, or right-hand corner, excuse me, is the next button. So once I'm finished with my turn, I click on next, and it will advance me to the next quarter. <clears throat> <coughs> All right. So let's take a look at the rest of the screen because there's a lot going on. In the middle is the different focus groups of the electorate. So as you can see, there are socialists, commuters, liberals, self-employed, poor, farmers, youth, and so on. And this tells me my overall popularity with all those groups. If I go and hover over a group, let's say youth, what it will do is it'll point to different areas on this kind of map of, of information on what will affect that, that voter group. So for example, if I went to capitalists, they are very concerned about a lot of things, things like private prisons, capital gains tax, income tax, uh, GDP, and labor laws. Now, what you see here are the things that can positively and negatively affect the this group of people so uh, private prisons will help them um, let's see the uh, let's see small business grants will make them happier uh, income tax makes them angry uh, state pensions makes them angry so if I want to cater to the capitalist voter group then what I would do is I would use my policies to help affect that uh, that group to like me a bit more uh, so, as you can see, we do have a lot of things going on, and we do have that lovely red, white, and blue look. Uh, go America. Uh, so, one of the things here is anything that is white is considered a policy. So, if I go to, for example, income tax and click on it, it'll take me to the income tax screen. And here, I can look at changing income tax. So through the slider here, I can decide to raise income tax or lower it. And as you can see, when I make the change, you can see the different voting groups kind of reacting differently. The more red means the more angry, and the green means the more happy. And as you can see, uh, down here in the kind of lower mid right area will tell me how much political capital will be needed for me to make these changes. Right now, in order to raise the income tax, I would need 30 um, political capital to do so, which I do not currently have. Uh, to lower it, only takes seven political capital. And to cancel it, 13 political capital. If I want to cancel all income taxes, all I have to do is cancel the policy. I'm gonna revert the changes here and close it. And then I can move on. Now, if I hover over income tax, there we go. It will tell me what areas will be affected. So once uh, first the voter groups in the middle will uh, be uh, either positively or negatively affected. Uh, but there's also other things and situations. So for example, high earnings, poor earnings, internet, currency adoption, and equality, they are all um, kind of tied to income tax. And those in turn, if I go to, let's say, internet adoption, impact other groups as well. So as you can see, brain drain, uh, middle earnings, technology, youth, income tax, sales tax, and so on. So as you can see, this is a pretty um, kind of interconnected web of, of events, 
policies and kind of situations that kind of all feed into what the electorate thinks of you. So if I go to a red area, for example, these are generally negative things that go on. Uh, so if I hover over this red one here, rare earth crisis. So it's talking about rare earth minerals, I'm assuming. And we can see what affects that. So foreign relations, productivity, uncompetitive economy, and technology. Now you can see technology is very much affected by the rare earth crisis, uh, mostly because technology uses a lot of those rare uh, elements. But uh, the speed of the arrows tells me that uh, this will more greatly or less, uh, less greatly affect the, the, uh, the areas. Now, everything here, there's a lot that's going on here, but there are even more policies that I can enact, and that is through the light bulb here at the top. So let's click on this. So here are uh, a number of different policy ideas that I can enact that are currently not enacted within the nation. So for example, if I wanted to, uh, let's say, introduce an internet tax, I can do so. Right now, I don't have enough uh, political capital to do that. But um, what I can do is, uh, if I did have enough capital, let's say recreational drug tax, I can go through and say, um, I want to implement this, and it'll take one quarter to implement, and it'll cost eight political capital, and it'll tell me what the cost and the income is. Now, of course, if I did do recreational drug tax, that means that it will impact other things like crime and police and things like that. Uh, we do have a number of different categories that we can choose from, and I have put in a couple of add-ons with this game so that we do have a little bit more choices that reflect uh, the reality of the world. So let's go ahead and close that. So as you can see, as I go through, uh, let's say, for example, I am going to, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower taxes. Well, let's take it down to 21% and I'll apply the change. Confirm changes. Sure. There we go. And so I've done that. I'm down to 17. Uh, maybe I'll go to handgun laws. Now with handgun laws right now, uh, we're not allowed to have any machine guns. Now, notice raise and lower. Basically, this is going to be one of those uh, topics that will be very hard for me to change because I'll need a lot of political capital in order to change it. I could move it up to no automatics, license required, license minimum age, strict controls, or total ban. And as I do that, you can again see the changes. Now, I can't do anything here, so I'm just going to close out. Uh, another area, uh, so this is the law and order area. This is the public services area. So I could go to the one with the little Jesus fish and it's creation versus evolution. So what I can do is I can decide how I want to raise or lower that. Now, once again, you can see that my, um, my political capital is not enough to, to deal with that. So I'm going to kind of scoot out. Another area we have is foreign policy. Uh, we also have welfare, and we have the economy as well as taxes. If I go to foreign policy, for example, what I can do is I can raise or lower the border control. So if I lower it, for example, uh, immigrants are less angry with me, but patriots are also less happy with me, and so on. Uh, I'll go and again apply the change. Confirm political capital, sure. And now I only have four capital left. Now it's not really much for me to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the next button. And when I do this, it will go through and simulate the next three months. And I'll go and click return to government and I get my quarterly report. Uh, and here it will tell me some information that I need to know. Uh, my credit rating has been downgraded. So uh, my current credit rating is now a C and the effects of which. So capitalists like me a little bit less and my GDP is going to fall slightly. Uh, my budget report uh, tells me things that are going on and it takes me to the chart. So as you can see, my debt is still going up. 
my income has now gone down so that is going to become a bigger issue uh, my interest rate has skyrocketed because we have changed our credit rating and with a lower credit rating means we pay higher interest on our debt uh, we have our expenditures that have gone up, my reserves, which are nil at the moment, and our debt. So, as you can see, we can uh, kind of see that. Also, notice the global economy is starting to slip. If the global economy goes down, it will affect me and uh, affect our income. I'll go ahead and close that. Ah, I missed stuff. There we go. Go back to my quarterly report. Uh, then we have a security briefing. So uh, here we do have membership in uh, various groups. Now, when they're in the green, they're not. They're, they're not in danger of doing anything bad or anything like that. But uh, I can tell what those, those memberships are and why they may be getting more or less angry with me. Notice my security effectiveness is poor. If I want to protect myself from being assassinated, I would need to bump up my security effectiveness. And I do that through law and order. Going back to my quarterly report, um, we do have our economic forecast. We also have our polls and we have our cabinet, uh, our cabinet report. So we can see everything that's kind of going on there. Great. So ever occasionally there will be events that do come up and I will have to take care of them and they will be kind of uh, gut decisions. So something happens within the electorate and I need to decide how to handle that. And that will help determine, uh, again, how the different voting groups consider me. So as you can see, socialists, they don't like me. Uh, motorists and trade unionists, um, they're, they're liking me a bit more. Conservatives are liking me a bit more. Capitalists do not like me as much. Middle income is not happy with me either. So the goal here is I'm just going to go through and enact policies. Now, this is the fun part. We've talked about the game. Now let's talk about the concept of this show or of this kind of project that we're doing. With next year being a presidential election year, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the candidates who are running for president and I am going to plug their policies that they have unveiled either through the campaign trail or um, actions that they have taken in previous jobs of elected office or outside of elected office and put them into this game and see how they do. So every week or so, I'm going to come out with a new candidate and plugging them into Democracy 3. I'll probably start off with uh, some, some candidates such as Bobby Jindal or Bernie Saunders or someone like that and just kind of go through and say, if Bobby Jindal was playing this game and if Bobby Jindal was president, how would Bobby Jindal do in this game? So what we will do is with the next episode, we'll start off probably with Bobby Jindal and we'll go through some, some kind of thought experiments a bit. So things like what would Bobby Jindal do with abortion law? And then what we will do is we will go online and we'll look at Bobby Jindal's stance on abortion law. And then with that knowledge, we will kind of figure out how he would react to this game. Now, of course, um, the goal here is that we want everyone to survive. And I think that it's going to be very important, uh, especially with politics, that we do this fair and equitably. Uh, I do have a pretty strong political leaning uh, one way or another. I'm not necessarily going to tell you that right now. But the idea here is that I am going to search online for the best information possible for each candidate, regardless of whether they are Republican or Democrat. And the goal here is to try to figure out how best to play the game using their policies. Uh, what we will do is when we search, we will keep in mind the biasness of the sources. So, for example, if I went to New York Times, um, I will keep in mind that they may sometimes lean one way or another. Or if I find a, a Red State or a Daily Kos article, uh, I probably uh, may think twice about using it to form the policy decision for that candidate. 
Uh, that being said, it's always good to know what the bias is, and we'll talk about that as we go through. But otherwise, uh, we'll try to keep it on the up and up. We'll also be looking at things such as their previous uh, record, either as like governor or senator or as representative or as a business person in the case of some of them. Uh, I will also look at their campaign websites. So if I don't know what their stances would be, the first step is go to their website, see if it's there. If it's not there, then we'll go on uh, and start looking at other sources to kind of figure out what's going on. Each week, uh, hopefully each week, I uh, will do a different candidate and hopefully by the time Iowa comes around, uh, I'll have most of the major candidates uh, kind of profiled. And then from there, we'll continue on. Uh, and maybe if policies change or something changes on the campaign trail, we may run another game with or another simulation with those change policies in place. And that concludes today's introduction to Democracy 3 and the concept that we're going to be moving forward with. Uh, please, we really, really want to make sure that we get some involvement here. So please like and subscribe and comment. And uh, we'll be starting very soon with our first episode, which will be uh, Bobby Jindal. So stay tuned uh, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.